With the Rams safely out of the way, the Chiefs are ready to move on. How do we do that? What can we take away? And what does this AFC picture look like in particular today with Matt Derrick? Welcome to Locked on Chiefs. From the land of the free and the home of the Chiefs, this is the Locked on Chiefs podcast. Welcome back, friends and neighbors. It's Locked on Chiefs, part of Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day for free on every platform I can think of. And then, you know, some other ones as well. Thanks for making us your first listen. If you check out another Lockdown show, I'd appreciate it, especially if that happens to be the draft show. A lot going on. It's the end of the college season. There's going to be some draft prospect talk. Uh, oh, wait, we've been doing it all year long, but I know you guys are ready for it now. Matt Derrick is here from ChiefsDigest.com. Welcome, Matt. A lot to go on here. I'm Ryan Tracy, the founder of Rogue Analytics and Performance Consulting, NFL 33, and RGR Football. Matt, it's, it's almost a sigh of relief, but... Can you really take as much away from the Rams' victory as as I thought we could the night it happened? Uh, I'm not taking a whole lot from it, good or bad. I mean, it was pretty much what I thought going into it, which was Aaron Donald and 52 guys. Um, you know, definitely, you know, you, you felt Aaron Donald's presence and everything. He, he had a good game. I mean, and talking to some of the offensive line guys after the game, I mean, the ones who had not faced Aaron Donald before, to have some stories to tell now. Um, but that was it. I mean, there wasn't much there for the Rams offense. The Chiefs defense dominated them, which they should. So feel good about that. Um, offensively, yeah, the Chiefs were off a tick. But I don't think that, I mean, they didn't bring their A game. But then again, the Rams didn't have an A game. I mean, Sean McVay even said after the game, you know, there's no moral victories. But this was kind of a moral victory. So... I, I think it's one, hey, you're the Chiefs, you win by 16, good win, take it, move on, because it's a much bigger game this week. Yeah, it definitely is. We're going to get to that coming up, folks. Don't worry about that. But I want to make sure that we don't o- overshadow everything. I feel like what we saw, again, as a bigger takeaway, is that the Chiefs' performance is now rounding into shape. This is the biggest hurdle left on the schedule. After that, it's about taking care of business. This is a real contest coming up. But what does that do to the rest of the AFC? When we look around, we know that Josh Allen and the Bills have stumbled a little bit. The Dolphins have caught up to them. Do you think that there's anything the Chiefs can do to really take the pressure off of themselves and put it on the other teams with the performance that they either had against the Rams or the one they're about to have against the Bengals? I mean, this Bengals game is going to be a huge message and signal that they can send to the rest of the league because you look at the schedule and, you know, and I was peeking at some of the, you know, expected odds coming down the road and Chiefs might very well be double digit favorites in every game the rest of the way going into week 18. And, you know, and even looking at some of the advanced odds, the only reason I think that there were, I saw a six and a half point favorite over the Raiders is because I'm sure a lot of people think that, the starters are going to sit that game and maybe the Raiders will be competitive. Um, if the Chiefs beat the Bengals, and especially if they're able to do it convincingly and at least play some good defense, I mean, they're now the prohibitive favorite. You're, you already are seeing the narrative this week being that the, the Chiefs are the new Super Bowl favorite as far as the betting goes. You're seeing it in the power polls and all of that talk that goes on around. But this is the the drag and the slay. I mean, even with that loss of the Bills, with the Bills not playing maybe as sharp as they were at that time a month ago, if the Chiefs beat the Bengals, all bets are off. I mean, they should run the table the rest of the way with this with this schedule that they have. Wouldn't surprise me if they rested some guys late and maybe they do lose a game. Who knows? But this this Bengals game is a true test. It's going to test to me that tells me whether or not the Chiefs are the best team in the NFL or whether they're just one of the best teams. One of the messages that I hope that these two games send is that we we need Travis Kelsey. He's the, the centerpiece of the offense, but we don't need Travis Kelsey. I hope that after they get past this game, they highlight and do everything they need to do to get these Ws. Hopefully, we'll talk about what the matchups are going to look like here in a little bit. But after that, the man is 33 years old. And so I'm starting to take a look at the postseason. And like you said, being favored by double digits in most games, that's fine. But where it has to come in is saving reps on your stars, especially the elder ones. That has to start with Travis Kelsey in my mind. Do you agree or is it keep everything flowing as it has been? 
No, I think that I think that's been a big part of this uh, entire season is, you know, really about trying to manage uh, Travis Kelsey's snap counts a little bit. I mean, we we've, we've seen that they're down. I mean, they are limiting him a little bit more than they have in the past. I mean, he's playing around eighty percent of snaps. Um, you know, there's been some seasons when that's been up more around ninety. So they're sneaking it down a little bit, but I th- I think it needs to be more, um, especially because you know we're coming off two games that were very similar in the sense that Travis Kelsey was a factor early, wasn't a factor for basically a half hour of the game time, and then was a factor again. And that's not enough of a trend. But for me, yeah, I I, I see Travis showing a little bit more signs of the wear and tear than he's shown in the past. And that's absolutely understandable. I mean, he's still the best tight end in the league. There's no doubt about it. But it's just how much of a grind of a 17-game season and three or four playoff games and and with as many snaps, and especially because I think teams are playing him more physical than they ever have in the past. Now that you know you don't have that Tyreek companion, Flames are playing him a little bit differently. I mean, they've been beating him up, and we've and I don't think the Rams probably did it as much as we saw in the previous couple of games because you know there were a couple of games in a row there where it was essentially the opponent was trying to take Travis out of the game no matter what. And if that just meant holding on to him and hitting the hitting the crap out of him, that's what they were doing. Um, it was a little bit. Was, I think they probably had a little bit of an easier outing against the Rams, but you see it. I mean, watch him at the end of plays sometimes. I mean, you'll see him getting up a little bit slower, and you know, and this is a guy who never would take himself out of the game, but you know, now he'll go to the sideline when he needs a breather at times. That's nothing to be ashamed of. It's it's just the you know a reality of, of where he is in his career. When he's on the field, though, he's the best in the biz. So save him up. I, I thought the snaps really showed that too, that Jody's really there to be out in patterns, whereas Noah's got a nice balance of bringing in the blocking aspect. I think he's growing into that pretty nicely, and that will protect Kels down the, the range as well. We need to get into what that looks like in the next ball game coming up against these Bengals. We'll talk matchups in a minute, but first, a word from our sponsors, the newest one in Turo. It's the biggest uh, marketplace for car sharing in the world. It's easy. All you got to do is book whatever you want, whenever you want, wherever you want, and a community of local hosts can get you a vehicle. You can browse a huge selection of vehicle types for just about any occasion or budget. You could get an SUV or a minivan for a trip with the family. You could end up with a pickup truck if you got something you got to do and need a a load delivered. Lots of errands can be done that way. You can even go test drive EVs or something maybe a little bit more exotic that you want to check it out. And so this is the thing. Every trip is backed by liability insurance. And that helps you. Terms, conditions, and exclusions do apply. But forget the boring rental cards and find your next drive at Turo.com. That's T-U-R-O.com. And then you have to make sure that you do what you got to do the rest of the time. That includes getting the dirty work done. And that comes down to blocking. There's a brand new podcast you guys want to check out. It's very limited. It's from Audible and Block Forever is that title with NFL All-Pro Ryan Khalil running the show. He's going to talk to all kinds of players, the greats, all the personalities of all time, and he sits down with them to get the real idea of what's going on, not just on the field, but in the locker rooms, the meetings, and back at the hotels. How you travel around this league is something I don't think enough people talk about, to tell you the truth. New episodes will be up and released ahead of Thursday Night Football, so make sure you check that out. Catch Block Forever series, available anywhere you can get a podcast, available now at Audible. Get in the game. Now, as we get in the game, Matt, um, and and cheers to Audible for their uh, their all twenty two view on Thursday Night Football. I do enjoy that. You got to take a look at what's going on because all twenty two gives you a better idea of the wide receivers. There's a lot in flux there. Juju played twenty nine snaps. They went out and brought in another wide receiver in the form of Ryan Edwards, former Raider, who I liked coming out of college and I thought he got had a good start. Clearly, didn't mesh in it. Atlanta, but is this, do you think, an acquisition based on injury history or just another guy that they probably had a good grade on uh, that they want to pick up for nothing? Yeah, I mean, I, th- I think it's a little bit of all. I mean, obviously, it's a guy who's had some success in this league. Um, definitely curious about, you know, hey, being with two different teams and course of less than 12 months, I mean, is going to raise some eyebrows. I mean, the trade to the, to the Falcons and then not working out in Atlanta at all. It raises some eyebrows, but yeah, I mean, if, if we know the history with Brett Veach, if he's got a guy that he liked as a receiver coming out and shows that there's some talent there, I mean, he's going to take a chance. And this is an absolutely low risk, you know, zero investment 
um, opportunity and yeah, provide some depth at a position where the team's been taking some injuries. This kind of a receiver with this level of experience, I mean, to me, it's not somebody who could come in and, and make a, an impact this year unless it's somebody of very limited role or special teams. But, hey, if it's a kick the tires for the future and especially considering where this team is as far as the receivers it has under contract beyond this season, it's a very smart, a smart investment just to see what's going on. That's kind of where I'm at, too. I don't think it's related to current injuries. I don't think we're going to see him on the field anytime soon, certainly not this week against the Bengals. I'm not as sure of that at the running back position. Another acquisition made with bringing in Melvin Gordon, a guy who's had a very rough season, a lot of coughing the ball up in Denver. I, I am bothered by that personally. Evidently, it's not enough that Andy Reid and Brett Veach are nervous about it, but what does that do with Clyde Edwards-Lair still out is there anything that we see change this week against these Bengals? It's really quick to get Gordon out there, but do you think that that's an outside possibility? I mean, I see this largely being a a, a depth move. I mean, you know, remember with with Clyde going down, you know, Ronald Jones is now playing. Really, the only insurance that the Chiefs have is Wayne Gallman on the practice squad. And I mean, you are to a point where. Just need some numbers because you're going to raise running backs in this league. You know that Clyde not might might not be the final one. So to me, hey, it's a veteran that's available. Probably a smart move. Will he play? My guess is probably not much, or if at all, barring injuries. Um, there could be some scenarios, but you know what would happen. I mean, does it make any sense to bring Ingram in and have him playing? Or excuse me, Melvin Brick coming in and playing ahead of Cly or excuse me, Ronald? No, I mean it makes no sense to me whatsoever. So yeah, I think this is largely depth move. See where he is health wise. What's going on? Where he is kind of in his career. Um, no doubt to me, it's a good move for the player because you get to come to Kansas City where you might get a ring even on the practice squad. Yeah. Um, the, hey, the turnovers are a concern, but things have been a disaster in Denver this year. So sometimes a player just needs to clear their head and get out of there. Maybe that's all he needs. We'll see. Um, but no, I don't see it as being a a, a real big uh, change of any sort or anything that's going to alter the depth chart. I, I don't either. I actually see it as specifically backup for I think Jones can probably stand in for Pacheco and Clyde. I see this as more of a, a direct replacement for Jarek McKinnon in what he does. So I, I do like having the diversity there in the backfield. And those guys are going to get used this week. I think I say Pacheco and McKinnon are going to be where they need to be everywhere this week. The question is, how often do they have to get run? And, you know, sometimes you got to change some things. Hey, sometimes you have to. You have to just alter things up, switch things up. We all have to do that from time to time. <laughs> Switching it up does sometimes. Mean, I, sometimes I can't even remember guys' names. I know, right? <laughs> it's difficult some days. It's like we've been doing this a long time. Uh, <laughs> that said, uh, what we've seen the last couple of weeks, a little bit more balance in the run game. 15 carries for Pacheco two weeks ago, now 22. I don't expect that against the Bengals front quite as much. I do feel like there's a little bit of a grudge here, a little bit of, hey, you beat us in our own house. You beat us in our own game last season. We're going to come out and show you everything that we have and can do. I don't think they're going to dedicate that much time to the run this week. Do you? Yeah, it's probably not a, a, a run first game plan that the Chiefs are going to put in this week. It is probably a pass to get the lead and then run the football if you can do that. Um, but, I mean, this is I mean, this is the game that everybody circled. I mean, mm -hmm. You know, the players were immediately talking about it and and there might be some lip service to downplay it a little bit this week, but make no mistake. I mean, this is the one game on the schedule this year in which the Chiefs are not the hunted. They're the ones that are doing the hunting this week. They don't have the target on their back. The Bengals have the target on their back. And that's why it's, I think, a huge game for both these teams. I mean, it's a it's a real test for the Chiefs to to go against a team that's got a lot of confidence against them, a team that they actually have to prove something against. These are all big deals. I mean, to me, it's a, it's a bigger game than the Bills game to me because that was one where everybody thought Buffalo was going to win because it meant more to them. Mm -hmm. This game means more to the Chiefs than it does to the Bengals. It should mean more to them. Chiefs are going to come out with a game plan designed to, to do exactly what worked last year. Because they were throwing the ball around in the first half of both those games last year, moved the ball effectively, and just were steamrolling the Bengals before second half adjustments and things broke down. 
I think the Chiefs will do the same thing. I think they're going to want to build a lead and then try and run the football. We'll see what happens. I don't think it's going to be a run first game plan. I think that I think Andy Reid's going to let Patrick Mahomes go unleashed this week. For me, it's all gas. There's absolutely no brake pedal in this game because you have to prove, especially after Patrick's comments after this last post game, that yeah, we got up and we relaxed. We let ourselves down by relaxing. They have to go through and keep that pedal down the entire way. That's my expectation. How they do that is going to be a little bit different of a challenge. We're going to talk about some of the guys that magically got healthy in time for Chiefs Week. We'll get to that in the individual matchups on the backside of this because we got to tell you about our friends over at LinkedIn. As you gear up for fall, you need to find the right people to help your team and your small business fire on all the cylinders. LinkedIn Jobs is here to make it easier for you to find the people that you want to talk to faster and for free. I'm always looking for good content creators, graphic artists, et cetera, et cetera. It makes it simple to just create a job in minutes on LinkedIn jobs and reach your network and beyond to the world's largest professional network of over 810 million people. You add your job and the purple hashtag hiring frame comes in on your LinkedIn profile and it spreads the word to your network as well as others that you're trying to find the right people to hire. LinkedIn jobs helps you find the candidates that you want to talk to faster. Did you know that every week, 40 million job seekers visit LinkedIn? Post your job for free on linkedin.com slash locked on NFL. That's linkedin.com slash locked on NFL to post your job for free. Terms and conditions do apply. There's a lot in terms of conditions, and condition is what we need to talk about is magically, there's a couple of guys that are back in condition. I was a little bit taken aback on the Chiefs side that Juju played as many snaps as he did. It was uh, 29, I believe. And that that balances out. You got a lot of, of output from Justin Watson. Did that surprise you, Matt? And was that more about tune-up or about keeping it cautious for Juju? Yeah, I again, I mean, probably a little bit more on the caution side, but I think the tune-up was a part of it as well. It was it was interesting that we kind of got two stories out of it after the game. I mean, Juju said he wasn't on a on a snap count, but Reed said, yeah, we, we rotated all those guys. Um, I mean, I think the translation was, yeah, he was on a snap count. So they they wanted to just ease him back in. Um, I think the, the probably the the biggest thing is that in a situation like that with a player who's coming off a concussion, I mean, you want to see what happens when they take a big hit and he got one of those. So, you know, I think that should make him feel comfortable that he's kind of passed it. Team probably feels comfortable that he's passed it. So that's a good sign. Um, you know, really the one that surprised me was was Joe Tooney. I mean, that was the one that was kind of out of nowhere. Um, even though he missed two practices last week, you know, usually if it's a guy comes back on Friday and works out, he's going to play. And that was, it seemed like it was definitely the expectation uh, but sitting him down certainly seemed like a little bit of this ankle is not getting any better with just continuing to play. Let's back off it a week, see if it can get better. It wasn't getting worse, but it wasn't getting better. Let's see if you can give him some time off. And, you know, yeah, I I wouldn't have necessarily wanted to give Joe Tooney a week off against Aaron Donald, but it worked and you were going to win the game probably anyway. So maybe that was the plan. Yeah, that was my takeaway as well. Like, uh, Joe, I'm sorry about your snap streak, but this one is not as important as the Cincinnati one. So take it easy, get back. I, I like that attitude. And with Juju, same thing. Now, they chose to warm him up in a ball game, snap count or not, and get him a, a little a little rust off just from being out a little bit. The Bengals took the opposite approach. And I think, from what I understand, kept – Jamar Chase out a little bit longer than they needed to. He probably could have played last week. They didn't in order to have him prepared for this ball game. That is the prime matchup for me. Obviously, we know what he did against Javarius Ward last season in two ball games. Now he gets to face a crew of rookies if they are able to manage their matchups. And I do expect them to do as much manipulation as possible to keep Jamar Chase away from Legereus Sneed, given how Legereus is playing. Do you see that happening too, or is it more of just give me your best and I'll take it? No, I mean, I, I think that last year the Bengals, I thought, definitely did you know a, a really good job of trying to move their guys around to get the matchups that they wanted against the Chiefs secondary. But to me, you know, the biggest thing is that th this Chiefs defense has been retooled and rebuilt, and this draft was 
entirely dedicated to taking down teams like the Bengals and slowing down their offense because big physical receivers have been the bugaboo for the Chiefs the last few years. And there's no team that's got a you know a bigger trio of tough targets than the Bengals do. Um, they can just push you around. And they did that last year against the Chiefs. They were just more physical. They were bigger and more physical. Um, they've tried to counter that. And I mean, it's a lot to put on three rookies to come in and be able to, to to take on the Bengals receivers. And I am not expecting that. I don't think you're asking them to be able to be that. You know, you know that the, they're going to get their yards. Burrow's going to challenge them. That's a tough matchup. But what you want to see to me is just these guys not backing down, making a few plays here and there, having some success. You know you're not going to shut out the Bengals. You're not going to keep them down. But it's, you know, can you stand up and challenge them? Can you keep them from just moving the ball at will like they did it a few times last year against the Chiefs? I mean, if you can if you can show signs that these guys can stand up to the, these, re, these receivers – it's going to be a tremendous help for their confidence and uh, it's going to give the Chiefs a lot of confidence going forward that these are the guys to have. Yeah, from the three rookies, I, I need two things. I need to deny routes, particularly at the release point, but later in the route as well. And I need them to affect the ball. I need PBUs. Now, they've been coming on as, as a group lately. Do you think that they can continue that rise? I think they can. I mean, you know, and, and that's one thing that, you know, with this group, and I, I think has, you know, done really well is that, you know, for the most part, they've done a really good job of being around the football. I mean, yeah, there are times that maybe they get beat on some routes and there's some combinations that they've had some problems with at times. Uh, but, you know, for with some of the things that like last year, as far as Burrow just trusting his receivers to go one on one downfield against the Chiefs secondary. That's where I think these guys have stood up pretty well. I mean, I, 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 there obviously have been some beats that they've had, but we've seen them contesting and being around the ball. Even McDuffie, the smaller of that group, he's got the speed that a lot of guys don't have to be able to keep up with this the speed of these guys. So, you know, whether it's, it's McDuffie's speed and quickness and anticipation, the size of Williams and Watson, to me, I mean, those are the traits that you have to have against these receivers. And if you can be around them and be around the football, that's a big part of it. And they've got the size that if they are near the football, that they can. They can knock things down. They can make it more difficult. They can get their hands in there. It's harder to do when you're you know, 5'10 than you are when you're Josh Williams' eyes. Yeah, no, that's absolutely true. Now, the only thing that I think national media certainly, and even we aren't giving enough credence to that is going to be a factor in this ball game is the performance of, of the middle triangle on the Chiefs defense. And I mean, Colin Saunders, Nick Bolton, and Willie Gay. They are key to me because we understand what the passing game is in Cincinnati. It's the run game that has been able at times to devastate teams. This run defense has been on, on the come up lately. It's got to continue and it's got to be rock solid. It doesn't have to be earth shattering. This isn't Derrick Henry, but it's got to be good. Do you feel like that there's enough emphasis put on that right now? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's where the emphasis needs to be. You're right. I mean, and we're going to find out a lot. I mean, because the Bengals got a couple of guys that give you a little bit different flavor, as Andy Reid would like to say, can do some different things. And, I mean, I don't think there's any doubt right now. I mean, maybe taking out the the two penalties that that he had against the Chargers, I think Nick Bolton is playing the best football of his young career so far. And he's been playing pretty well mm -hmm. already. But I, I think the last few weeks, I mean, he's just, especially since the bye week, I mean, I think he's been playing fantastic. Uh, Willie Gay, since coming back from the suspension, I think he's been playing at a really high level. Uh, those two guys together are, are playing off each other really well. And also the Chiefs have shown that they're comfortable rotating those guys, that they've got enough comfort in like a Darius Harris to come in and give him some snaps and give those guys a rest, which I think is pretty key. Now, Nick Bolton's not coming off the field, nope. but, you know, and maybe this is a, a game where maybe you see a bit more of Darius Harris than a Leo Chanel. We'll see. But, I mean, I think you're going to get some you know, rotation in there to keep those guys fresh. And Colin Saunders might be just one of the most underrated the run defenders in the league right now. Um, you know, and that's something to me that I think is pretty impressive because, you know, he came in with a guy that had the ability to get into the backfield and maybe, you know, pass rush was going to be more of his forte. He's embraced the run. He really has. And I think that has what made him a better player this year. 
And yeah, if if he can if he can get a good fit step and and if he can you know break things down in the middle a little bit, let the linebackers chase and make some tackles. I mean that's that's a good recipe for slowing down the Bengals' run game. I agree. It's got to be an emphasis, folks. It's a little early in the week. There's some injuries that are going to settle what happens here, so we're not going to put Matt on on board here for a prognostication unless you have something right up your sleeve, Matt. <laughs> I have a preliminary one that ah. I, I have have not locked in, but I, I mean I I mean I think both these teams are going to move the football. I think it's going to be a race. Um, I know the Chiefs want to win this game convincingly. I don't know if they can. I mean, the, the Bengals just have too much comeback in their DNA. They've played too many close games. I mean, there's an outside chance. I would put it in the 5% category that the Chiefs come out here, and maybe they do boat race the Bengals. But I think that there's a 95% chance it's a close game, but it's a high-scoring game. I think the Chiefs want it more. I think they will win it. I'm going with them right now, 37-31. I like that one. We will check back in with him pregame, folks. Make sure you check out ChiefsDigest.com for all of his work as well. Matt, thanks for taking the time. Always a pleasure, Ryan. Take care, everybody. Everybody, check out the Locked On Sports Today show. That's got a little bit of everything from all the major sports, including ours. So make sure you hit that up. And you'll have our predictions on Friday as we go through the key matchups. Chris and I will guide you through, and we will be postgame with Matt yet again. Thanks for listening to us today. We'll talk to you tomorrow.